What is art? What is the purpose of art? What inspires me to do it? I ask myself these questions sometimes. I spend a lot of my time drawing, thinking, and creating. I often find myself lost in time. I like working at night. You have the chance to calm down and concentrate. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my dad. My father's been making pottery for over 40 years. He made a career out of selling his stuff at various stores and at craft shows. My dad always had a unique way of how he made his craft. His leaf candle was one of his signature pieces for many years. He made a great assortment of candle holders. He would work long hours creating his work in his own garage and made a career as a production potter. He was known for his blue glazes and symmetrical designs. He made a great variety of different pottery items and throughout the 80s and 90s he sold a lot of pieces. However, that changed once the 21st century came around. A lot of things changed. People changed. Social trends changed. A lot of full-time crafters were forced to quit. I remember my dad being worried. I remember the financial uncertainty. And I remember my dad was forced to make changes. So we tried different things. We sold jewelry, picture frames, ceramic animals, and even rocks. Eventually, I became older started having my own ideas, which had an impact. Then we got away from the jewelry, the picture frames, and even the rocks, and we went back to basics. I go to a lot of shows and I meet a lot of people. Most people think that this business is easy and fun, but they don't realize the hardcore truth. This lifestyle is hard. It's labor intensive. You have to spend a lot of your hours preparing materials, doing repetitive tasks, while also focusing on the business aspect of things. There's a lot you need to understand. You need to understand glaze and clay chemistry the physics behind kiln firing, glaze application, food safety, proper glaze fit. You need to acquire skill, having the ability to throw pots. And for the longest time, I was caught up in the making and selling of the items without understanding that there was a deeper meaning. Last year in June, I was in a craft show when an old man came into my booth and looked at the pottery. He stood there for a while and then he looked at me and said, Your dad always cherished simplicity and consistency, and he always cared about his work. Then the man picked up one of the pieces and was impressed by the amazing craftsmanship. I never met the man, and I was confused. So I asked him if he was old friends of my dad. The old man looked at me. He smiled and said no. I started to feel a little uneasy, thinking to myself, how the hell do you know all of this if you never met my dad? But before I had a chance to speak, he told me that he did not know of my dad personally, but he knew of my dad's craft. He used to be a crafter himself, and he would see my dad's pieces for many years at different shows. The old man explained to me that when you get really good with your craft, you start to create your own style, and you begin to put a part of who you are into your own work. He had the ability to know who was the maker by simply looking at their craft. 
and knew about the maker by looking at their artistic interpretation. He kept looking at the pottery. And then the old man looked at me and said, You're getting involved. You're putting your own perspective into the work. You have a different style than your dad, but you also share a lot of his characteristics. Your glazes are different, but you have still maintained your core. I never looked at things from that point of view before. I never understood that art can have a deep meaning. Before, I didn't really care about it, nor did I think much of it. I just did it because I felt that I had to. But that man planted a seed in me that inspired me to dig deeper and deeper, and to get better. This lifestyle is hard, but it's worth working through the frustration and pain. Because I have the chance to create work that most people can only dream of doing. I create work that people love. I create work that I love. Whenever I draw, I don't use kits or graphs or anything like that. I picture a scene in my head, and then I just do it. I allow intuition to be my premise and technique to finish the process. People oftentimes ask me how long it takes me to complete a piece. And I have to be honest. I don't know. I do whatever is necessary. If I feel that there's a need, I do it. Some pieces need more care than others. Most of the time I find myself in a state where time doesn't exist and then I get into a work rhythm where everything else becomes irrelevant. Sometimes I'll work and then I find out that it's four in the morning. Recently, I've been making changes though, changing the layout of the glazes and how it's applied, and I have been able to create a variety of different glazes with different colors, such as earth tone colors, dark blacks, pure whites, yellows, and even brilliant purples. But I always find my way back to the core colors that have defined my father's work for years. Certain aspects of the pottery are different today compared to decades ago, but we still have our core, not just the colors but also the way how the pottery is thrown, trimmed, and designed. There's a big form of uniformity and consistency with the work, and that has not changed. I still work with my dad, and we use our different strengths to create beautiful work. There's still a lot that I can do to keep improving. I am constantly trying to get better with my talents. I would like to one day create pieces that truly do amaze people give people a sense of raw emotional feeling. And I think that's what art is all about. It's about connecting and relating to people. This is not a job. This is a lifestyle.